Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Let's talk about March. In March I ended up reading 11 books and I will say March started off as a very very slow month. I started a new job or a new position at my job at the beginning of March so it kind of was hectic. I didn't really have time to read. I was still figuring out my position. It was just kind of chaotic but then that second week of March is when everything picked up for me. If you guys want go follow me on Goodreads which is linked down below so you guys can kind of stay up to date with like what I'm currently reading, what page I'm on, my review of the book before I even come out with the wrap up video. I'm going to be talking about the books that I read ranked lowest to highest. So two star reads to three to four to five and we will go from there. It's also a very windy day today in Colorado. So I don't know if you can hear it, but it sounds like there's a tornado outside. There's not. It's actually a really sunny, pretty day. It's just really windy. The first book that I read was Zodiac Academy and it was all the way in the back there because I gave it two stars. <laughs> I will not be continuing this series as of right now. I thought this story was a little too chaotic for my taste. We have Tori and Darcy who are growing up in the mortal world and then one day someone approaches them very randomly and out of the blue and says, hey, you guys are actually fae. Come to the fae world because you guys rule the fae world basically y'all are the two princesses of the fae world and that happens on chapter two and it goes so haywire from there i again i didn't love the first book i thought it was a little too all over the place the world building wasn't very well structured or well done and the one thing that really bothered me is that they harnessed their fae powers on chapter like four <laughs> and i was like wait y'all grew up didn't even know about the fae world and now you're like experts in your in your field like it doesn't it didn't make any sense like it was really cheesy it kind of reminded me of teen wolf or those tv shows like the wink saga like it was a it was a good book but i'd rather it be like a tv show like a cheesy tv show where there's drama because there's multiple men involved with the two girls and it's like there's there's bullying and i don't know it's just very chaotic i can see the appeal and i can see why people liked it but it just wasn't for me so i did give it two stars the next two star book that i read was twisted love by anna huang i gave this one two stars again because it was just shorter and really really fast paced and unrealistic in my opinion there were so many subplots going on so we have ava and alex alex is kind of this real estate guy who kind of reminds me like he should be like the head of a mob but he's not like he's just alex volkov he's russian he's just very very harsh and has minimal feelings for people I actually really liked the chemistry between ava and alex it was just really really rushed in my opinion ava was the most annoying character i've ever read <laughs> she was very whiny or almost like just kind of those i don't even know how to describe it just that girl i don't know how to i don't know what what to call her for my taste in female characters she wasn't my favorite let's just put it there now the spice 10 out of 10 the spice was great i really did enjoy the spice but i didn't like the plot so many subplots there was like alex's uncle was doing some stuff ava's dad was doing some stuff but ava's dad turned out to be someone else it was just very very chaotic two stars the third book that I read, and this book I gave three and a half stars, is Twisted Games. So the second book in the Twisted series. I picked this one up because I had already bought it. <laughs> but this one, as you can tell, is a lot denser than the first one. It's a good like 200 pages more. And I liked it so much better. I think three and a half is a pretty good rating. This is about Bridget and her bodyguard Reese. Reese is this ex-marine. He's very, very tough. Doesn't have a lot of feelings. He has some past trauma growing up. She has some past trauma with her parents and them passing away, but she's also a princess. So she's kind of privileged. Now, let me tell you, Reese, his dirty talk will have you blushing. If you are wanting some dirty talk or you think that dirty talk is lacking in smut books, this one, not lacking at all. You'll find the greatest dirty talk smut in this book. I did listen to the audiobook occasionally, like I had it on Libby. So when I was in the car, I would listen to it and I had to turn the volume down multiple times because I was like, the people in the cars next to me, I swear to God, they can hear the 
hear it right now. Like it was very, very intense, sexy scenes. But I thought the plot was really, really well done. And there was definitely some drama, some subplots again that probably weren't needed, but I actually enjoyed the subplots a little bit more in this one than I did in Twisted Love. And I've heard that this one is the better book of the series. So I will read books three and four, but I don't know if I'll like them any better. Who knows? Let's wait until I read those to make my opinion. But I've heard this is the best one of the series, so I did like it. The fourth book that I read was The Dark One by Nikki St. Crow. This is book two in the Never King series, and Never King is right here. I did end up vlogging my reading experience with this one. It's an erotic novel, but the plot is just so, so well done. Like, I am more so in it because of the plot. Like, Peter Pan, he's trying to catch his shadow. He's trying to find his shadow so he can restore the magic to Neverland. And we have our main female character. What is her name? Winnie, I think. Who is kind of just helping out and like also in a reverse harem relationship. There's four men total and one female. For being so short, you get a lot out of it. So I 1000% recommend this series. It's on the darker side. There's a little bit of trauma involved. This book specifically is more so about Winnie and her relationship development with Vane. And it's good. Vane is a hard ass. Vane puts up no shit. Vane actually doesn't even like Winnie. But you gotta read to find out what happens. The next four star book that I read was The Alice Network. And this one was a new genre for me. I've actually never willingly picked up a historical fiction book before. For, and it blew my mind. Look, if you're looking for a new genre, I suggest just doing it, just jumping in and trying it out. You probably will end up liking it, especially a book like this when it's so highly rated already. I wasn't like as intimidated to go into it. There's two POVs in two time frames that you're following. So you're following Charlie. It's 1947 in her point of view. And then you flash back to 1915 when you're in Eve's point of view. And Eve and Charlie end up meeting in the 1947. I can't go into it. There's so much that happens. It's so good. It will have you bawling your eyes out by the end of it. There were some really, really intense parts. Obviously, it is based off World War II and like Eve was a spy in the Great War and then we flash forward and now it's post-World War II and you're seeing Charlie kind of trying to find her cousin because her cousin kind of disappeared and you're going on this journey with both of them to figure out what happened to Charlie's cousin and then you get also you find out what happened to Eve because Eve is this tattered woman and like this old lady grouchy grump and you just it's so good it's so good the next book i gave four and a half stars which originally i actually gave it five stars and then after thinking about it for a little bit oops after thinking about it for a little bit i changed my mind it's four and a half it's about matt and grace and they met in college they were room kind of not roommates they roomed next door to each other it was a co-ed building and you see their relationship develop now let me tell you grace is the most bubbly wonderful female character to read about. Their their banter and the wittiness is amazing in the dialogue. If you like the funny dialogue or that flirtatious kind of dialogue, this is the book for you. Like the, it made me giggle. It made me blush. Like it was so, so sweet. And Matt is just a charmer. He's so polite, so kind and patient and charming. Loved the two characters in this. Now, it is a second chance romance, so there's a big time gap that you get. I believe it's 10 years, I'm not sure. But it is the most frustrating thing. I get, I took away 0.5 stars because the end or the, the plot twist or the third act conflict, whatever you want to call it, is the most frustrating and heartbreaking thing ever. It will have you sobbing because you feel so terrible for one of the characters. And I hated it it like made me so when i read it i like put the book down and i was like no that did not just happen like it's so upsetting and you as a reader are just feeling so hard for this character and just want the best for them but i i will say i still loved it <laughs> i picked it back up like i put it down for a second thought about what just happened picked it back up finished it loved it four and a half stars please pick it up it is second chance it's like forced proximity there's a lot of good tropes in here the next two books are actually in a series. It is Finley Donovan is killing it and then Finley Donovan knocks him dead. These two books, wow. Okay, so I gave Finley Donovan five stars and I gave Finley Donovan knocks him dead four stars. So five and four. I could not recommend this 
series to you anymore. I want to read the third book. I haven't gotten it yet. It was the second book was good, but the first book was obviously better. Let me tell you about it. It's about Finley Donovan. She is a recently divorced or separated mom of two and the first chapter will have you hooked. It's so funny. It's kind of like a rom-com mixed with a murder mystery mixed with like a thriller like there's so much going on and the comedic relief is wonderful. I loved the side character Vero who is Finley Donovan's like secondhand man who kind of like helps her do all of these murders but Finley Donovan isn't technically a serial killer. She gets pulled into this random job one time by mistake and ends up going through with it. She gets a bunch of money and she's like huh I should do that again. So it's in the second book is very similar. It's kind of them fixing some mistakes that they made in the first book but also there's a new mystery involved in the second one. I thought Thought they were so so good. I think Finley Donovan Jumps the Gun actually just came out in March so it's a recent recent drop so I will pick that up soon. The next five star book was Say You Swear by Megan Brandy. It's so pretty. I also vlogged it so if you want to go watch that vlog you can. Okay there's five friends. Now learning all of their names was a little bit difficult for me so I'm not going to try and repeat it okay but the main ones that you need to focus on Ariana Chase and Noah. So there is a love triangle involved, but Ariana and Chase grew up together. So in this group of five friends, they grew up together. They're like siblings. They're bonding. They go on vacation together. They went to school together. The boys play football and the girls, you know, they, they hang out together, whatever they do. They are super, super close as a friend group. Ariana has had a crush on Chase for a very, very long time. And it's kind of like if you growing up, I'm speaking to whoever is watching this video, growing up had a crush, okay? And that crush is just everything you think about. You're obsessed with them. Everything they do, they find funny. You might have grown up with the person. That is how Chase and Ariana are. Ariana ends up showing these feelings towards him. They're about to start college. They're a little older. Ariana starts showing these feelings like, Chase, I really like you. You know, whatever. Chase isn't digging it because he's like, actually, we're just friends. Your brother would literally beat me up. I don't want to I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. She's butt hurt about it. So this boy Noah comes around. Noah's wonderful. And we know where the story is leading from there. So after the first like 50 pages, you're like, okay, I see where this is going. <laughs> I don't know what to say without like spoiling much, but basically, you know, that childhood crush, but then you meet someone new and you're like, oh, they're not the whole world. They're not that perfect. They're not who I thought they were. That is how Ariana feels. She's finding out that like her friend group is great and she grew up with them and they're wonderful, but it's time for her to branch out a little bit. So in this new school and at college, that is exactly what she does. She ends up finding new friends and she ends up finding a new boy toy, everything from there. Now, what I wasn't expecting is the end, okay? And I cannot say a word I can't even tell you my feelings towards it because it would probably give some feelings, it would give some things away, okay? So I can't really say my feelings towards it. Just know it will have you, mm, can't say that. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it for real, just pick it up. When you finish the book, I want you to message me on my Instagram and be like, yo, I just finished, say you swear. Holy fuck. The la technically the last book. This is like the 10th book, but I did read the novella after it. So the next two books are kind of in the same series. The Serpent in the Wings of Nice by Carissa Broadbent. I gave five stars. I've seen this book all over BookTok, all over Instagram. People are like, this is the next Akatar. I kind of agree, honestly. I cannot stop thinking about it. The second book comes out. I don't know what it's called. Don't ask me. The title is way too long. But the second book comes out in April and I am dying to read it. I feel like I'm going to be in a slump until I read the next book. I did read this on my Kindle and oh yeah, I bought a Kindle this month. It's in the other room. I'm not going to go get it. It's about a girl. Oreya or Oraya, whatever you want to call her. I say Oreya and she is human, but she was taken by a vampire at a really young age. And not only just a vampire, it's the king of all vampires. His name is Vincent. Vincent is this father figure to Oreya, but she grows up basically as a vampire, but in a human body. So she's like surrounded by vampires. She's lived in danger her whole life. She's never felt safe before. 
but Vincent has promised her like you will always be safe around me So Vincent is actually just a big sweetheart. There's this competition. Don't ask me how to pronounce it I don't know what it's called. There's a competition held by Nyaxia, which is like the goddess of this realm It's over a four month period there's five competitions and they're brutal. The action scenes in this book are written so clearly. I felt like I was watching an action movie. Like it was so, so well done with her writing style. Like, then the romance comes in. His name is Rain. Rain is the love interest in this book. Rain is magnificent. He's incredible. He's a vampire. There's a lot of withholding the truth, honestly, between the two, but like they're in the competition together. So they literally, at one point, they have to work together as a team for one of the, the one of the trials. But then you see that they also, towards the end, have to like shift gears and like fight against each other. I did like Akatar. I think you would like this book. The romance aspect, but the plot is so heavy and dense and hope that the next book is longer. I know this book was 500 pages, but I was like, I need more. I need more. Where's the rest? I did read the novella attached to it, the 1.5 books called Sixth Scorched Roses. That's hard to say. And I gave that one three and a half stars. So I did give The Serpent in the Wings of Night five stars. The novella attached to it, I gave three stars. Just as good, but not like, not anything great. It was only like 170 pages or something. So very quick, fast paced. It's in the same world, so it's good. It's a different time frame though. But the second book comes out next month. So trust me when I say I will be reading it the day it comes out and probably finishing it that day also. <laughs> Did I talk about all 11 books? I feel like I'm missing one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh yeah, I did. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> that is it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. March was a really, really good month. It started off slow and I was kind of nervous. I was like, I'm literally gonna read three books, but I kind of cruised through the second half of it. Here are the vlogs that I filmed this month if you wanna go watch them. I'm trying my best with this new job. It's a different, it's a manager position. It's just a lot more attention. I have more hours. So I'm really still trying hard with YouTube. But if you want to support me some way, all of my links are down below. So my Amazon wish list my bookstagram my instagram my goodreads go follow me on the other platforms i love you guys thank you for supporting me and i will see you in the next video